Hi, everybody. Um, if any of you are here because you'll think there'll be uh, cool videos of simulations like last presentation, I'm afraid you're a bit out of luck and you might want to try the UAV session next door. Um, so I'm Joanna Hovins. I've been um, working at uh, CAE for the last seven years. I've been working in the GIS field for 17, and almost 15 of those have been with FME. Uh, CAE is a global company. We're located in 160 locations in uh, 35 countries. We employ right now 8,500 people because we just hired another 500 in the last month. For our 70th, 70th anniversary, we um, went on a hiring spree. And um, of those, there are five of us who use GIS and FME, and we have to support the entire company and all of that locations. So no pressure. So working with lists. If you've used FME, chances are you've um, seen a list. There are 15 transformers that are dedicated to lists, but over 80 transformers can produce a list. But there's no such thing as a list data type in FME. Lists are simply attributes with a specific naming convention. If you've got the braces with a number in it, FME will assume it's a list. So you can use regular attribute manipulators like the attribute creator, attribute manager to create a list. In FME 2017, it will actually recognize the attributes as meaning to be a list. So even though in the attribute creator, I've created each individual element on the main canvas, it actually just sees that main list. In FME 2016 and prior, you will see that list index zero, list index one on the main canvas, and you'll have to use an attribute exposer to get just the main list name, so then you can then use it in the list transformers. So a little vocabulary. There are three types of lists uh, in FME. We have our simple list, which is a list name with an index storing a value. We have our complex list, which is a list containing sub-elements. Uh, this is one of the most, uh, this is one of the lists you'll see most often uh, being produced by a uh, transformer. And so then you'll have the list name, the index, and then another attribute. So here I've got both name and type as sub-elements on the pets list. And then you can have nested lists where one of those sub-elements is itself a list. And though I don't recommend trying, you can even get to the point where you have nested complex lists. So there are lots of situations where you want to process every element in a list individually. So we're going to look at three methods for doing so. The classic, the loop, and the Python method. So the classic method is easy to set up you have access to all of the transformers in FME. The bad news is that you either lose the geometry or duplicate the geometry, and there's some special handling required for non-list attributes, and it doesn't scale super well. So when you're dealing with hundreds of thousands of features or hundreds and thousands of list elements on the feature, it gets fairly slow. Um, the way the classic method works is you create a unique ID generally using a counter if you don't already have one on the feature. You explode the list using the list exploder. You perform whatever manipulations you need to do. Uh, in my example case, I'm just converting feet to meters. Now, if I've got um, an XML that I've read in that came in as a list, but every single thing is in feet and I need it in meters, um, that's an, ex an example of when I have to perform a calculation on every element on the list. So once you've done the transformation, whatever it is, you then need to recombine those features into the list. There are two ways of doing so. You can use the list builder or the aggregator. In both cases, you're going to be grouping by that unique ID that already existed or you created with the counter. Um, in the list builder, any attribute not in the group by is going to be lost. So you can either put in a lot of attributes in the list builder, 
So your group by would be not just your unique ID, but also any other attributes you want to keep because you're guaranteed to have those same values in the attributes because it was originally one feature. Or you can use a feature merger after the list builder on the original feature to restore those missing attributes. Uh, on the aggregator, you can use the option to uh, accumulate attributes. So you'll get all of your original attributes back, but you end up with one copy of, sorry, for every element in the list, you end up with an aggregate. So your geometry is, uh, I'm not gonna say duplicated, but it's created as many times as you have elements in the list, and so it's not your original geometry. So the way to fix that is you can use a geometry part extractor and use a little X query to extract just the first part of the geometry, and that gets you back to your original geometry. Uh, that particular rest statement, which is uh, for geom in geometry, return number geometry properties, I never remember. I have a little post-it note, and I just <laughs> copy and paste it every time I need to use it. So the loop method, there's no issues with geometry or non-list attributes. Whatever came into the loop will come out from the loop. It's more efficient than the classic method when you've got shorter lists. So lots of features, but only a few elements in the list, this is efficient. When you've got lots of elements on the list, this becomes very inefficient. The bad news is if any of your processing requires a uh, blocking transformer, then you need a linked transformer, custom transformer, and that becomes a lot more harder to develop and see what's going on. So the way that works is you create a custom transformer. You create an attribute to hold the current index. You use the uh, list element counter to determine the length of the list. Then a tester to check if the current index is less than the length of the list. If it is, then it goes out the passport and you do your manipulation. After your manipulation, you increment the value of that index by one and you send it back to the loop and so loop comes right in before the tester. And so, this, so the same process happens incrementally every time you go through the loop, um, and then you output it. So there are two ways you can um, work with the current element. If you're doing a simple expression of some sort, you can reference the element by using at value and then your index attribute inside of the braces. Um, if you're doing a more complicated uh, process, you can use the list indexer with the uh, index to promote as your um, attribute containing your index. Uh, if you're using the list indexer, I highly recommend that you use a prefix because you don't want to, ha if your list elements contain the same name as attributes already on the feature, they will not be overwritten so you will not be working with the right data. And also, if you use a prefix, it becomes very easy to use the uh, bulk attribute remover to remove all of those promoted items before it uh, leaves the custom transformer. Uh, on the Python method, it's extremely efficient. There are no attributes or geometry issues. Bad news, it requires a bit of coding, and not everything that's available in the main canvas as a, as a transformer is available in the Python API. So in the Python methodology, you're gonna get the, the list attribute using the feature.getAttribute uh, method. You'll perform whatever manipulations you want on that list, and then you'll set the list attribute um, using a, and generally a for loop, and then on the uh, parameters of the Python caller, you'll have to expose that list attribute if it's not one that already existed. So if you're creating a new list, that even though it's on the feature, it won't be visible unless you uh, expose it. So it sounds great, but there's a few catches you have to worry about. So types. Up until about eight months ago, 
uh, FME was a typeless language. It meant that everything you brought into Python came in as a string, no matter what it was when it started. Um, as of um, in the last few months, they've been slowly adding different types. So some feature attributes will come in as integers or floats, um, where others won't. And I'm not really sure how to tell which one's which without just trying and seeing whether or not you get a type error. Um, so in a lot of cases, you will have to explicitly cast back and forth between your types. So in this particular ta uh, case, my uh, distance uh, is, uh, is a float, but it comes in as a string, so I actually, when I'm performing my calculation, um, I need to uh, do float x, not just x. And for the set attribute, I need to wrap it in a for loop, and again, the uh, attribute name um, is being converted to a, a string, which is why I have the uh, percent %d percent %i in the uh, Python color. So there is a way to export a, uh, your list just in a single line, not going through the for loop, which is just feature.setAttribute, providing the list name without an index, and providing it with a list, but it only works on strings. If you try it with a numeric list, you get a type error. So the only difference between these two is in the first one, I've got um, strings stored, uh, numbers stored as string, whereas in the second one, they're just straight numbers, they're straight integers. So you can either cast the list to a string or use a for loop. Uh, I recommend using the for loop. Next thing to look at is nested lists. You can't access them directly but you can retrieve a specific sub-element for one index on the main list, or you can retrieve a list of all of a specific sub-list for every item on the main list. So if we look here, if we try uh, just the main list relationships, no index, we get a returns none. If we try a relationships dot past, this is a list coming out of the spatial relator, if anyone recognizes it. Um, again, you get a return none. But if I put an index in my relationships, um, I get that list. Or if I put an index in the pass, I get the list. So I want to use a for loop to go through and get every element, but I don't know the length of the list because if I try and get the main list, I get a no value. So the way you deal with that is before the Python caller, you use a list element counter to get the length of the list. Then your first thing you're going to do is when you're re is retrieving that attribute as the list element count, and then you can, um, in your for loop, go through from i in range to your list element, your max index, which is your list element count. And then within that list, you can get, sorry, within that for loop, you can then go through another loop to get the secondary list. And that way you can get every single element of both lists. So here's a couple of benchmarks between the different tests. Um, so as you can see, when you're dealing with a few features and a few list items, all of the methods are fairly comparable. Um, but when you start getting into uh, a lot of list items, the uh, list builder performs considerably less efficiently than the loop, and when you start getting into large numbers of features, Python just blows everybody away. So why would you want to work with lists? Um, here are a couple of custom transformers that um, have been created to work with lists. Uh, the ones in rows are ones that we have created inside FME. They're for our internal purposes. The uh, ones in white have actually been created by Takashi, and he has made them all available on the FME hub, because he's awesome that way. Um, so I'm just going to look at a couple of these uh, in detail. So the longest edge calculator. That um, 
uses what we call a, a list histogram, a list histogram sum. So here, if you're looking at this, um, this feature and you want to know which is the longest edge, you might reasonably assume it's the bottom one. But when you look at the vertices, it's actually the one on the left edge. But we want the logical long edge, which is that bottom one. So we use a, vari a variation of the histogram summer to get the longest cumulative edge within an angular tolerance. So as long as they have the same degree, uh, same, uh, same angle within, in this particular case, two degrees, it will sum their lengths together before it determines which one is the longest edge. So the uh, Visvalingham simplifier, uh, this is a very cool algorithm for generalizing features. Um, it uses a method of creating, of calculating the triangular area of every three set of adjacent vertices and then iteratively removing the main vertice that has the smallest area. So the way we actually produce this transformer is we store all of those coordinates in a list, calculate the area in a list, and then use the list element remover to throw out the specific ones that have the lowest value over and over and over again until we get the reduction we're interested in. So, any questions? Complete silence. <laughs> That's never a good sign. <laughs> Um, all of the presentations have been filmed and uh, will be made available in a couple of weeks, I'm guessing? Yeah, uh, within a couple of weeks, they'll all be on the SAGE website. And um, you can search by presenter or by topic. So, yeah, along with all the slides, I'll ask. Yes? I'm not allowed to. Anything developed on CAE time is RIP, and I'm not really allowed to share it. <laughs> yes? There is a way to use the XML fragmenter um, in, the, um, in the advanced method, like, so not the basic one, yeah. but the advanced, there is a specific syntax you could put in that it will always return a list, okay. even if there's only one element in the list. And I don't remember what that is off the top of my head, but if you come ask me uh, later, I can go look it up. Actually, no, because FME doesn't know that a list is a list, so it will look for a, a zero index, a one index, and even if three is there, if two is not there, it will stop. That is true in the main um, item and even in Python. If I try and query in Python to return a list, it will not return a full list if it's broken. Any other questions? I think I should ask, why doesn't SAFE put all their list information in Python? <laughs> why doesn't SAFE offer a bunch of those custom transformers as main uh, items yeah. that we don't have to go for custom transformers? <laughs> Are you going to get me in trouble? I promise not to put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs>